the second topic in this section is called domain and range. And basically what domain and range does is it takes a relation, remember the set of ordered pairs, and it splits it up into two different parts, the x and the y parts. So the domain talks about all of the x values in a relation, and the range talks about all the y values in a relation. So um, if there's a question or anything that asks, okay, what's the domain and range of this function, set of ordered pairs, this relation, anything like that, they're going to be talking about, okay, what are the possible x values in this, and then what are the possible y values. So for my domain, I'm going to look at that set right there, and I can see I have a 0, I've got a 1, a 5, and two 6s, but I only need to list out one. So the possible numbers in this particular set for x can be 0, 1, 5, and 6. That's all we know. Um, so um, that's what we've got there. Um, and the possible y values are listed right here. That's our range. And we have to list those out too. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And that's my domain and range for this particular table, or this set um, relation. And uh, yes, we do need to list out all of those. Okay? This can also be done with maps. And we already did a table one, so I'm going to skip this one right here. Um, so if we do this with a map, our x values always come first. That's our, um, our input, excuse me, that gives us an output. Okay? So my domain for this particular map is going to be 6, 5, 2, 1. And you don't have to go in numerical order. You just want to go in the order that they're presented to you. And then my range will be negative 4, negative 1, 0. There's my set. Bad little mark right there. That works. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you do the domain and range for a table and or a map. Um, and then the last thing that we can do, we can list relations out as graphs too. Um, now if you're given a bunch of points, like we are in the first graph here, um, you're going to look at what these points are. So 1, 3. Um, and here's what we can do. So my, well let's get all the points first I guess. 1, 3, 2, 1. 3, negative 1, 4, 2, 5, 0, and 6, 6 up here. Okay. So remember, um, your domain is that first value, the x value. We have specific points, not a continuous line or anything like that. So we'll look at the x values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Yes, you will want to list out all of them. You don't want to be lazy and say 1 through 6 or anything like that. Um, the domain and range are pretty specific until we get to lines and line segments, which I'll show you next here. Um, so then we're going to look at our range. Uh, 3, 1, negative 1. All of my y values, right? And then looks like 2, 0, I think I got that in the right order there. Order there, three, one, negative one, and then yes, so that looks good. So that's how we would do that with points or specific points. I prefer line segments or lines because it's a lot easier to get your domain range. Um, you don't have to list out all the points. So for number two, um, remember for my domain, we're looking at what are the possible x values that I could have in my graph. Well, if this is my line segment. Looks like negative 2 is the, the, the smallest point I could have for x. And 4 is the highest point I could have for x. And these are greater than, or they're inequality symbols, but it's saying that um, x could be less than or equal to 4, or x could be greater than or equal to negative 2. Ba mainly it's just saying x can be anything between negative 2 and 4, uh, but it could also equal negative 2 and 4. 
And the reason for that is because I could look at any x value between these two. For instance, let's say negative 1 half. And I know that that correlates to some point on that line. Um, like if I looked at negative 3, well, there's, there's nothing here because the line segment ends. Okay, um, So it has to be bounded by negative 2 and 4. Now let's look at the range. That looks at my y values. So now we're going to look vertically. Um, my lowest point is positive 2. And my highest point is positive 4. So y can be any value between 2 and 4. And that's how we can write out the domain and range uh, for that particular um, line segment. So y can be anything in between those two values. And lastly, uh, we've got uh, a line, a line that goes on forever. These ones are even nicer. Um, because if we look at the domain, that's my x values, um, we look at, well, which x values is this thing going to hit? Well, um, it's going to continue going forever to the left and the right, meaning every x value that we could think of will have some point on this line, right? Um, so the domain is all real numbers. I'm just going to write all reals for that one. Same thing when I look at Okay. What are the y values that are going to hit? Well, it's also going to keep going up and down forever in all directions. So my range is also all reals. There we go. And that's how we do domain and range with graphs, maps, tables. And I'm sorry, I went a little over on this video. Uh, the next one's super short, though. All right. So uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. But watch the next video. <laughs>